your excellencies, generals, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's sometimes difficult to be given a short time to say a few comments about a friend, a close friend for that matter, and a good professional colleague. But let me start by thanking the African Center of Strategic Studies for this opportunity given to me to be here today with a lot of my friends and brothers and sisters from Africa who have the opportunity to meet and bound together and also have an opportunity to discuss a lot of cross-cutting issues, particularly on democracy, rule of law, and human rights. But let me not depart from what I'm invited to talk about, and that is a few comments on General Ward. You have a lot of his bio on, your, on the table. I never saw a copy of it when I wrote the few comments I have. But by great coincidence, you will find a lot of things I have written. I am not going to be charged for copyright because I did not. <laughs> General Ward was born in Baltimore, Maryland a graduate from Morgan State University where he had his Bachelor of Arts degree in political science and then went to Pennsylvania State University where he got his uh, master's degree in political science. In Africa, we say like father, like son. His dad was in the military, in the army in particular, and he followed the footsteps of his father and joined the army and got commissioned as an infantry man in June 1971. He has attended series, several military courses. I will just touch on very few to save time. He attended the infantry basic and advanced courses, the US Army Command and General Staff College and the, the War College. He has served a, a lot of tours both here at home in the U.S., including Alaska and Hawaii. And in his early stages, he was in Korea, Egypt, Somalia, Bosnia, Israel. And on his last command, I'm not sure, neither General Ward or his wife, Joyce, Joyce will be able to count all the countries they have visited in Africa. He had held several command appointments. One of them, as a brigade commander of 2nd Brigade, took him to Somalia. He also later commanded the stabilizing force in Sarajevo, uh, Bosnia. On the staff, he was an executive officer to the Vice Chief of Staff here in Washington, D.C. He worked in the U.S. Embassy in Cairo as a, military, as a Chief Military Cooperation Officer. He has also served on the Joint Staff here in Washington. The most interesting appointment to me is that he was the Deputy Commander of the U.S. Army Command uh, and that was the point that our path crosses together when he was in that appointment. I will talk about it later. He has selected by the Secretary of State to serve as the U.S. Secretary, uh, Security Coordinator in Israel and Palestine Authority, where he served between March and December 2005. When you talk about awards, I wanted to say, no wonder his name is Ward, 
all you need to do is to add an A in between the words. General Ward has a well decorated officer. He has so many awards that if I want to talk about them, then we will not leave this hall tonight. Let me just touch on a few of them. He has the Defense Distinguished Service Medal. He has the Army Achievement Medal. He has the Combat Infantry Medal. And I can go on and on and on. But he's not only recognized at home, even in faraway Africa. His services have been recognized. His contribution to development and security in Africa has been recognized that the president of Liberia, in February this year, awarded him the Distinguished Service Order Medal of the Armed Forces of Liberia. As for achievement, I can also not talk on them all because they are too numerous. But let me just say one thing, at least for us Africa, that General Ward is the fifth African American to attain the rank of four star. That is not in the news. <laughs> and on an important date, which General Ward may not remember, that is on the 1st of October 2007. 1st October is very important to me because that is the National Day of my country. And on that day, in the year 2007, he was appointed the first commander of the U.S. African Command. And that, to my mind, is the greatest achievement that he has had, at least to us Africans. He has been honored with the 18th Trumpet Award on the 30th uh, January 2010 for his accomplishment as an African-American who has significantly contributed to an enhancement of life for all. He was presented with the Lifetime Achievement Award on the 24th Annual Black Engineers of the Year Award in February this year. He was recognized for his leadership and mentoring throughout his 40 years in the Army. As the commander of African Command, he initiated the U.S. African Command Inspector General Conference, which was held for the first time on the 23rd to 25th of March in Ghana. General Ward will be remembered in Africa by the military because of his effort in providing training assistance to hundreds of military and civilian personnel from 44 countries, resulting in the building of strong interstate military relationship. And he will be greatly remembered for his determination and the contribution of his command in uplifting the economic development effort in Africa through partnership in building sustainable peace and establishing conducive atmosphere to enable security and justice to reign. As a great general and diplomat, he worked closely with the U.S. State Department as well as other stakeholders to help the growth of democracy in Africa by putting necessary institutions in the areas of law, rule of law and human rights. To enhance African security, his command has worked with many regional organizations and the African Union in conflict prevention and resolution, security sector reform, and execution of the African Marine Law Enforcement Partnership Plan, which helps in combating illegal oil bunkering, poaching of fisheries, drug trafficking, and piracy. The command outreach program has touched the lives of thousands of troops and families across the continent of Africa in HIV AIDS prevention messages. It has also provided counseling <coughs> and testing services for several service members and their families. General Kip Ward, as the first commander of Africa, has laid a solid foundation for which the future commanders can easily build upon. 
through his willingness to listen and to learn, he was able to earn respect and friendship of many that today he has built a good rapport and lasting friendship with several leaders in Africa, both from military, among the diplomats and politicians, including the clergy. He and his beautiful wife for over 40 years, Joyce that's here with us, will be greatly missed in Africa. But I know that both of you know that you have several homes across several countries in Africa. You are welcome at every given time. Now on a personal note, I first met General Ward, as I told you, when he was the Deputy Commander of the European Command. That meeting has remained in my life, in my body, and in my soul. Because for the first time, somebody spoke from his heart and not from his lips. He called me his friend that day. And several have also called me their friend when they come to pay an office, office call. But he was the first who, after leaving my office, called back and asked me, how are you doing, my friend? And from then, we have established a solid friendship that at every given opportunity that General Ward has, he gets in touch. He invited me to Addis. He invited me to Dakar for the first meeting of the Transfer uh, Health Issue on Terrorism. And he invited me to Stuttgart where I spoke on my experience as a force commander in Darfur. And above all, when I won this award, when I won this award last year, he was there to make some kind remarks about me, and I feel very touched and appreciated. But that is not it. The day and the period I will never forget is in 2007, when I was the chief of defense staff of Nigerian Armed Forces. And that was a trying year where, for the first time, in the history of Nigeria, that there was an election to transit from one civilian government to another civilian government. Those who follow the event then will know what a trying and challenging period it was. At one time, I felt lonely and no shoulder to lean on. But the award was there. He called me on several occasions. I will never forget your support and the kind words of encouragement you gave me in 2007. If the Visionary Award is presented to those persons who the African Center of Strategic Study deem to have made outstanding contributions to promoting democracy, improving civil and military relationships, countering ideological support for terrorism, and fostering good governance in Africa, then the center has done the best selection because they have selected the best person who is more than qualified for this award, and that is the person of General William E. Cape Ward. I wish to congratulate you, my friend. I want to congratulate your beautiful wife, Joyce, for standing by you all along. And I congratulate you both for this well-deserved honor. And I wish you both a very, very peaceful, loving, disengaged life from active military. <laughs>